you know, given A and B, you will that determines whether you have um, repeated eigenvalues or distinct real eigenvalues or complex eigenvalues. Um, so the question is to identify that relationship, like what pa what pairs of A and B will determine distinct eigenvalues, for instance, real eigenvalues. What pairs will will um, give always repeated eigenvalues? And when they are repeated, what value? What what uh, pair? For what pairs A and B? Um, you have that Jordan block form rather than diagonal form. In fact, I think you never get diagonal unless A and B are both zero, right? Um, one one way to do this, and it's kind of sort of part of the next section, but um, <clears throat> maybe I should talk about that a little bit if that's helpful. Um, is if A is 2 by 2. In fact, in the solutions to this homework that I just returned to you, um, there was a problem saying write all the matrices for which 0 and 1 are both eigenvalues. Okay, So that could be so also some, some sort of ambiguous question. Of course, if you know, um, so I gave you two solutions in that, in, in my solutions. Um, one key factor here is, or one, one way of to, to, to solve this is to say that if I have two eigenvalues for this matrix, then the sum of the eigenvalues is something, and the product of the eigenvalues is also, um, so lambda 1, lambda 2 eigenvalues. Right? There's always going to be two complex eigenvalues, no matter what. Right? The sum of those two uh, eigenvalues is always going to equal what? Hmm? A real number specifically is going to be the sum of A with D, called a trace of A. And let me, let me, I mean, you've seen this. Um, how do you find the eigenvalues? You say characteristic equation, polynomial, right, equals zero. So what's the characteristic polynomial? A minus lambda, B, C, D minus lambda equals A minus lambda, D minus lambda, minus B, C, so lambda squared minus a plus d lambda plus a d minus b c, right? So solving this quadratic equation, whether they are real or whether you have real or complex solutions, is basically uh, the same as factoring this, right? One factor is lambda minus lambda 1 and another factor is lambda minus lambda 2. So, you see when you so when you match these two, basically identify the coefficients, what's the coefficient of lambda squared? 1, right? What's the coefficient of lambda? Well, it's minus lambda 1 minus the sum of 2 lambda 1 and lambda 2 has to equal minus a plus d. So the sum of lambda 1 lambda 2 has to equal the sum of a plus d. Okay? That's called the trace. How about the product? What's the term that doesn't have lambda in this? It's lambda 1 minus times lambda 2. So this has to be equal to... Hmm? This is called the... determinant of a. Okay. So that's something uh, well useful in general is to 
relate the sum and the product of the eigenvalues with the trace and the determinant. And I think we might even have uh, used this when we talked about sign of the eigenvalues. We said if both eigenvalues are, or well, when do we know both eigenvalues are negative? When the sum is negative, when the trace is negative, but the determinant is positive, right? So, right? So if I use D for the, I think they used, okay. What happened? Sorry about that. If I use, uh, D for the determinant of a matrix and T for the trace which is A plus D then D positive and let's see T positive implies lambda 1 and lambda 2 are always what? Uh, are positive but let me say have positive real parts Okay. It is possible that they may be complex conjugate. Okay. Think about that. Um, so either lambda one, lambda two are both positive, real, or lambda one two is alpha plus or minus i beta, right? with alpha positive. That's what it's saying. Right? And let's see why, because in the second case, well, the first case is clear, right? The sum, if they're real eigenvalues, the sum positive, the product positive, product positive means they have share the same sign. So what sign has to be positive? The sum is positive, okay? But if they're complex conjugate, then what's the sum? The sum is 2 alpha, right? So alpha has to be positive. And what's the product of this two complex conjugate? What's the product of complex conjugate numbers? Hmm? Alpha square minus i beta square, right? So this is alpha square plus beta square because I squared is negative one. Okay, if you didn't have complex variables, at least you know um, that's all we use. That I squared is negative one, so this is always positive. Okay, so it's positive real parts. It could be real or it could be complex conjugate with the positive real parts. What if D is negative, but T is positive? Actually, let's do the other one. What if D is positive, but T is negative? Now, what can we say about lambda on lambda 2? Have negative real parts. Agree? They're bo either they are both real, in which case they must both be negative, right? The product of two negatives has, is positive. The sum of two negatives is negative. But again, you could have them to be complex conjugate with the negative real part because the product is still positive. Positive, but the sum is negative. Okay? So what is D negative telling you?
Can they be complex conjugate? No, they they have to be real. Right? Can they be repeated? No, because the product has to be negative, right? This means uh, lambda 1, you know, if you put them in order, like increasing order, then a real distinct, and one is negative, one is positive. Okay? So, this is really useful when, when you have this question, you know, take take a matrix, okay? 1, negative 2, um, 3, and 1, okay? What's the first thing to look at? Determinant, right? What's the determinant? Negative 5, negative, right? Inclusion, two distinct real roots or real, real eigenvalues. And moreover, one is negative and one is positive. Right? Is the trace giving you any information? Like, what's the trace of this? Trace is negative. Well, it just says what? That the sum of this one negative and one positive is negative. So it means that the negative is more an absolute value is bigger than the positive, right? So this means this is zero, this is lambda two. Lambda one is more like this guy here is bigger than this guy, right? So that's all it's saying. And for many, for, for most purposes, I mean, as far as the the face portrait, that doesn't make any um, well essential difference. So um, you see, I don't even. I mean, of course, to get the exact face portrait, we have to find the eigen vectors. But we know there are two distinct. Uh, we know there are two eigen directions, and uh, again. On one direction, there is the, the arrows are going in towards zero, and the other direction, the, go, the arrows are going the opposite, right? Again, I mean, you can do that by hand. I just want to uh, get the plot as accurate as I can. So, one. One was it like this or was it three and negative two? So okay, so just kind of bypassing all that um, computation issue, you can see one in the other eigen directions, and the one corresponding to lambda one negative is this one, right? So the picture looks like this. Okay? So that's kind of so that, that uh, determinant and trace, well, determinant, if the determinant is negative, it already tells you the story. But if, if it's positive, also the trace um, tells you what, what is happening. I mean, what kind of eigenvalues do you have? And basically, what kind of canonical forms do you have? 
So what are the canonical forms? Well, if they are real and distinct, then it's diagonal, right? If they are repeated, then it could be either of the two, right? That's the one, that's the second one, and the third one is alpha, beta, negative, beta, alpha. This, this is correspond to complex conjugate roots. Okay. So last time I kind of um, I didn't finish the exact the entire computation there. Um, I just want to bring this up. Um, or is everybody seeing this? Uh, I mean, how this matrix comes about? Um, So let's let me let me before I do that let me let me conclude this the the the, the picture just like what is that uh, in your problem asking? It's basically saying um, draw uh, what's called a bif pretty much a bifurcation diagram. Um, showing the different uh, canonical forms um, in terms of determinant and T. Okay, and here's, I'm going to draw this here, hopefully I have space. Um, so, in your case, it was A and B, right? A and B. So, so the question is, what regions in this plane, in this case D and T, we have a particular uh, a canonical form showing up? And we said that if D is negative, for instance, then it's I, right? Two real roots, one positive, one negative. So it's the first conical form, right? Um, if D is positive, so I mean we should be a little bit more precise here. So um, the best way is kind of to um, to draw this uh, phase portrait. So. Um, so the face portrait corresponding to that canonical form. That's probably the best way to do it. Um, what's the, the um, it's the hyperbola, right? One going um, away and one going towards the origin. So let's say lambda 1 is negative, lambda 2 is positive, right? That would be the face portrait corresponding to lambda 1, lambda 2 diagonal matrix. Agree? So, so this picture corresponds to every single point in this, below this uh, d equals 0. So d negative, right? Now what happens when d is positive? We said that it, it can, like if t is positive, then I have two outgoing uh, two, two positive eigenvalues, right? Or two complex conjugate eigenvalues with positive um, real parts. So the question is what distinguishes between having real or complex eigenvalues?
this is not square. So lambda square minus t lambda plus d, that's the characteristic equation, right? What tells us whether it's a positive, uh, whether it's real or, or imaginary eigenvalues? t square minus 4 d, that's, if this is positive, then this is real eigenvalues. And if t square minus 4 d is negative, then it's imaginary. Actually, it's complex conjugate, right? Okay. So in this plane of parameters, t squared or, or yeah, t squared minus 4d basically means d is compared to t squared over 4. So d is t squared over 4 is a parabola here. So it means a point that sits here, so that is for that value of d and that value of t in that region, what happens? d is bigger than that, so we're in this scenario where it's complex conjugate and t is positive, so its real parts are positive. So it's actually a spiral spiraling out. And again, this behavior occurs for all, so I should, I should say here, so this is lambda is alpha plus or minus i beta with alpha positive, right? It spirals out because it's alpha. Because alpha is positive. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back to that complex conjugate uh, case uh, and we'll see this picture, but, right? I mean, you could you could just instead of putting the face body, which is awkward, you know, you could just put the canonical form, which would be alpha beta and negative alpha negative beta with alpha positive. Okay. Below this parabola, so a point here, d is less than t square over four, so it's there are real eigenvalues, t is positive. So there are two real positive eigenvalues, right? So the, the, the picture will, will then look like going away from the origin, right? And again, this means 0 less than alpha 1 less than alpha 2. So this is really what, what a bifurcation diagram means for this. I mean, it's basically analyzing how the canonical form, therefore the phase plane looks in different regions of this, of this parameter space. So if I, if I have these two parameters, D and T. Okay? In your problem, it's A and B. So what will you, what will you have to do? And of course, there, there's something in the, in the left side too. So it will be uh, below the parabola, but above the d equals zero. It's going to be going in, right? So alpha one less than alpha two less than zero. And again, I may not have the orientation of this right. Remember how. Depending which one is bigger, this can go like this or it can go like this. Okay. Probably I didn't get it right on this one. Uh, and this is spiraling in, right? Because this is alpha is negative. In which problem? There are always real roots? Okay, so that's easy then. But regardless of what the specific problem is, um, that's what it's asking. So it says, you know, x prime equals to a b b zero. Right. The determinant is negative b squared. So unless b is zero. There's always two real roots, right?
But the question is, draw this AB and identify the, like, what are the, the regions where, where, this, where the behavior changes. Right? If D square is neg if this square is negative, if D is negative, the determinant is negative. Uh, it means it's always like hyperbolized, right? Hyperbolic one going in, one going out. Um, it's only when B is zero that you have what? Basically, zero, zero, then this is diagonal, right? So it means if, if A is not zero, it means you have a, a two distinct, one is zero eigenvalues. And we've, we've seen the face portrait there. Okay, so it's not really asking you for the face portrait yet, but. So maybe I should have given you number five. Number five, the determinant is always zero, right? So it's just a trace. So the determinant is zero means what? Means one of the eigenvalues is always zero. So you have it's kind of the generic case where you have. Um, Either a I mean, you have a whole line of, of, of steady states, and then the other solutions go in, or they, they stay parallel to it. Right. So those are two types of pictures. One lambda is zero. Okay. And 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 again, they in the. In the uh, Problem from last homework where you said eigenvalue zero and one. Well, that basically said the, tr the determinant is always zero and the trace is always one. Okay. And these two things determine or, or, or imply always that the one eigenvalue is zero and the other has to be one, right? Okay. So I'll let you. Fill this in, but and you can use the same, you know, same. You can either plot the face portraits or you can plot the uh, just the canonical forms. You can just write the canonical forms. Okay, so uh, let me go back to the last thing we did uh, when we had complex eigenvalues and just revisit this for a second. Um, X. So what did we what did we figure? We figured that uh, in order to write the general solution of a two by two system where we have complex conjugate eigenvalues, the easiest is I mean the standard way to do it is to find the real part and the imaginary part of of this kind of solutions, right? Actually, find an eigenvector corresponding to, to one to one eigenvalue. That's a complex eigenvalue, so there's going to be a complex eigenvector. And then write this product and get the comp the the real part and the imaginary part. Okay, call those. Those will be solutions, right? If I have a solution of a linear system, then the real part and the imaginary part are both solutions to the same system. So these two are, are solutions to that system where I use the real part and imaginary part of that eigenvector. Okay. So then I write a linear combination of the two um, and this gives me the general solution of the, uh, of the linear system. Okay. So then the question was what was the matrix that, I mean, reduced the matrix A to canonical form. And what is the canonical form? 
So we said that if there is a, a change of coordinates, t, that basically t of y is x, right? We'd like to find that particular uh, change of, of variables that uh, makes t inverse at canonical form. And what's the canonical form? Well, we said it's this, but let's see why was that. So we said a, we just wrote what a um, of x, the eigenvector, the complex eigenvector is, right? We wrote u and v are the, 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 the uh, real and imaginary part. Then we came up with a system, right? So how do we conclude that our uh, linear transform or, or change of variables has to be this one? Can I just write on this uh, the previous lecture notes? Hmm? How do we conclude that? You see the whole thing, like in the when, when this was when this was real. How did we when when we had two distinct real eigenvalues? What did we use for t? The matrix t was consisting of the eigenvectors on the uh, two columns. So we put the the, the eigenvectors as the columns of this matrix, put them together, and and do this. So if I do the same here, but I put the real part and the imaginary part of a complex eigenvector. So if I do this u and v, okay, then let's see what uh, what is a times u, uh, excuse me, times t Right, it's going to be u v. Uh, excuse me, it's going to be a times that. So it's going to be alpha u minus beta v and beta u plus alpha v. Now, this is a column and this is a column. So I put a column next to each other. So notation is kind of. If I use metal notation, I'd put a comma here, but yeah, okay. So I put a column next to next to another column. You agree with that? These are columns. So how do, how do this? So I can I can write this as what metrics multiplied by u and v? Uh, no, actually. I want u and v first times what metrics? Well, how does matrix multiplication work? Anything that I put on the first column here, actually, let's see. Now, on the first row, it's going to hit u. Anything that I put on the second row is going to hit v. So if I want alpha u minus beta v, then I have to put alpha negative beta on this first. Okay? You see now that I multi multiply this times this plus this times that. That gives me the first column, and this is beta alpha, right? So this is equal to t alpha beta negative beta alpha. So conclusion is a t is t times that. So it means t inverse a t is indeed okay this one 
and um, so that that's what it is, right? That's the reason why um, that's called a canonical form because again, you put the uh, the eigenvectors, not the eigenvectors, but the real part and the imaginary part of the eigenvectors on the um, you know columns of this matrix T, and that's what brings it into canonical form. Okay, and um, as far as the as far as the uh, face 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 uh, portrait is concerned. The matrix A is um, so. Let's see. So if we have x prime equals a x with t inverse a t is alpha minus beta al uh, beta alpha. So in other words, eigenvalues are alpha plus or minus i beta. Okay. Then the y system is y prime equals alpha beta negative beta alpha y. Yeah. And what are the solutions of this? Hmm? Well, y of t is a linear combination of so C1 what do we say it is so it's Y1 plus C2 Y2 where Y1 and Y2 are the um, real and imaginary parts of So where y1 plus i y2 is uh, what e to the alpha plus i beta t times the eigen vector complex eigen vector. What's a complex eigen vector for this? Cosines and sines come from here, right? So let's see what's an what's a complex eigenvector for that. So it's um, a is well alpha minus lambda beta minus um, beta and alpha minus lambda. All right, lambda is alpha plus i beta. So this is minus i beta, minus beta, beta, alpha minus, 
I'll minus I beta again. So we want to hit. We want to get something that makes this zero. So x y. I'm going to put x y here just to be correct. Equals zero zero. Right. So let's see. Beta just cancel. So I have minus i x plus y equals zero. So I can pick uh, what I uh, minus. 1 and i, right? So that's 1 and i is the eigenvector. Okay? So when you when you uh, multiply through, what do you get? You get e to the alpha t cosine beta t, right? Plus i sine beta t, 1i, so is what? Let's separate in the real and imaginary part, because that's what we want. We want something that has i, something that has no i. So this is going to be e to the alpha t cosine beta t, and minus sine beta t plus i e to the alpha t sine beta t and here cosine beta t okay so this is going to be y1 and this is going to be y2 it's very similar to what we did last time but just for this specific canonical form so we get y of t to be linear combination of this c1 e to the alpha t cosine beta t minus sine beta t plus c2 e to the alpha t sine beta t cosine beta t okay so now let's look at uh, alpha so think of the solutions I mean the the, the, the solutions in the xy plane Let's say if alpha is positive. Then it's going to be, this factor is going to be going to infinity. And, well, let's just plot the one where C1 is 1 and C2 is 0. Right? For instance, C1 is 1, C2 is 0. So it's going to be, cosine and negative sine, right? This goes in a circle uh, starting, if I start with t equals 0, which is going to be cosine 1 and sine is 0, right? Then depending on how beta is, let's say beta is positive. So let's say alpha is positive, beta is positive. right? Then you see, come this this term is going to get negative as t increases. This is going to go spiraling in into you know clockwise. And of course, it comes from okay. If beta were negative, then it would counterclockwise. Okay. And of course, just one solution. Well, take the one where uh, c1 is zero and c2 is one. Then you would be, you would be getting another solution, right? That starts here, for instance, right? But how would it go? Well, it pretty much has to go the same way, right? It cannot intersect the other one, right? So all of all the solutions will actually end up looking like this. If alpha is positive. If alpha is negative, it's pretty much the same picture, but it's a spiraling out. And if alpha is zero, then we saw that, you know, no matter what uh, C1 and C2 are, it's going to be actually concentric circles.
and again the beta is going to tell you uh, which Something's fishy here, isn't it? Isn't that the curve when alpha is less than zero? Why does it go to zero with alpha positive? Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had it backwards, yeah. Does everything go right? Hmm? Let's see, let's, let's, uh, there was a, a, a question in the homework, or maybe not in the homework, but it was uh, the one we completed last time. What was that? I was in the homework. So let's see, did you, um, maybe I shouldn't do it then, huh? Uh, let's, let's do a similar one. Let's say x double prime plus 2x plus 5x equals 0. Okay? So that's a harmonic oscillator. When we write it as a system, ends up x prime is y, y prime is minus 5x minus 2y. So the matrix is 0, 1, negative 5, negative 2. Okay. And How do we find the, the, the eigenvalues? I mean, you put the determinant of this minus lambda identity equals zero, and you write that, that uh, quadratic expression, and you end up with exactly what you knew as being the characteristic equation for a second order for a second order constant coefficient do you know why What was the reason why the characteristic equation was when you, when you talked about second order linear constant coefficient? It was always just take those co coefficients, put them in, and write a algebraic equation rather than a differential equation. Hmm? 
What, what was the reason? E to the RT or E to the lambda T, right? So, so if you said the solution is E to the lambda T, then the lambda must satisfy this equation, right? Well, in our case, and of course you assume that, that those roots were, were, well, okay, you didn't assume anything, but that worked if the uh, roots were distinct, right? Same thing here, if you, if you kind of know ahead of time the roots are distinct, or the eigenvalues are distinct, then you can look at a solution that is of the form e to the lambda t and the derivative of it, which is going to be lambda e to the lambda t. Okay? So in fact, you're looking at basically a, it's going to be e to the lambda t times a vector x1. That will be uh, the eigen, ve eigen um, vector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda. Okay. So when you when you say this is a solution of this of the system, then you're going to end up with the same lambda. Okay. So it's the eigenvalues of this matrix that gives you that. Okay. So lambda is plus or minus uh, one plus or minus square root of minus 4, so it's 1 plus or minus 2i, right? So alpha is 1, beta is 2. Negative 1, thank you. That's important. Okay? Right, so that's uh, the, these are the eigenvalues. And what's the matrix that transforms this into a canonical form? You have to find, well, the matrix that transforms in canonical form will have on, di on, on columns the real part and the imaginary part of, of the eigenvector, of an eigenvector. So it's going to be, uh, let's see, it's going to be minus lambda 1. So let's say lambda 1 is minus 1 plus 2i. Okay, 1 minus 5 minus 2 minus lambda 1 x, y equals 0, 0. So it's minus, lambda 1 is 1 minus 2i, 1, negative 5, minus 1, minus 2i. So what's going to be 1 minus 2i, x plus y equals 0? The other one should be multiple of this one. So what's an x and what's an uh, eigenvector? I think 1 for x and lambda basically. Okay. 1 and lambda. Okay, so how do we write this? What's the real part, the imaginary part of this? One minus one plus two plus i zero and two, right? So this will be u and this will be v. So what's t? What's the matrix t gonna be? One, negative one, zero, two. Okay. So, what do we pretty much have guaranteed? That this times this, uh, I mean, t inverse at is going to be what? Negative 
alpha, which is negative 1, negative beta, that's negative 2, 2, negative 1. Okay? So when you do the, when you find the eigenvectors with the other eigenvalues, you just get the same U of B. Exactly. It's just you're going to get the complex conjugate. That's exactly right. So it's a good point. I forgot to mention it. If you were to pick the other one with a minus, then um, everywhere you would have the other, the opposite, right? Should be minus. Yeah. So if I have a, a complex eigenvalue with a com with a corresponding eigen well eigenvector, then the complex conjugate of that eigenvector is going to, be, is going to also be a, an eigenvector corresponding to the complex conjugate eigenvalue. So again, forget the the red ones, the marking. Just I just put them here. Um, yeah, but the, the real part, the imagined part, will be the same. Right? And now we can say what they, you know, now that we have these two, um, well, now, now we can say what the picture looks like, right? In the y variable, so in the, the y system, right, is going to be y prime equals t inverse a t y. This is going to be a spiral, spiraling in towards the origin, right? And let's see again, is it counterclockwise or clockwise? It doesn't, doesn't matter. I think it should matter, right? We know it's spiraling in, right? Because alpha is negative. But for beta, saying clockwise. Well, again, the solution is here for, for general, so you can see it here. So it's going to be e to the minus t and then cosine of 2t minus sine of 2t plus e to the negative t sine of 2t and cosine of 2t, right? The question is, what is the solution doing? I mean... Does the beta just control how fast it spirals? It controls the, the speed, right? The exactly, yeah. So the twice, right? So that just gives you the period. So two t means t between zero and pi makes a complete rotation. Versus if beta was one, you had zero to two pi. So the bigger beta is, the faster this rotates. But the face portrait is 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 uh, the same, right? Remember the, what you see in the face portrait is the trace of the is the trajectory. It's not the actual curve, so it won't change the face portrait, right? If you change beta, you just change the speed at which you're you're going around that spiral. Yep. What was minus, minus 5? Minus 2? Yeah. 
So it is clockwise, right? What would it take to be counterclockwise? Actually, I'm, I'm plotting not the, here is the nice spiraling in at, it's like round, right? So it's, it's, it's just exponential and cosine and sine, but when you write it in terms of x variable, then what you're going to get? You're probably going to get some deformation, right? Because What's the transformation? The transformation takes this axis and it changes them. In, it switches them into. So it takes this axis and this axis, and it turns them into what? Into one negative one. So that's this axis and zero two. That's the same as this one, right? So what happens? The spiral is going to look the same, but it's going to be flatter or just kind of deformed. Which, of course, is kind of is hard to see. Uh, I mean, it's probably easier to see on this picture, but of course, assuming that this is uh, nice and square, um, right? You can see how it's deformed around. Let's say those two axes, okay? So what would it take to be counterclockwise? The transformation, the change of variables would have to be flipping the orientation, right? And When is the transformation preserving the orientation? One is one transformation reversing the orientation of a plane. Does anybody know? What quantity of this matrix is 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 telling that? So negative one, negative two. It's not it's not individual things, but is the determinant? Is the determinant of this matrix? If the determinant is positive, what we know is not zero because it's invertible matrix, right? If the determinant of that matrix is positive. Then the orienta orientation is preserved. If, there, if the determinant is negative, it's flipped. Just think about diagonal matrices, right? Think about diagonal metrics. If it's a diagonal matrix and they both have the same sign, they're both positive, say, then what's the transformation in the plane? Just one axis is doubled, right? But if one is positive and one is negative, again, this would be a diagonal matrix with one positive, one negative, then one axis stays the same, the other one gets flipped. So that's a, that's a change in orientation, yep. So if we had used lambda 2 to find the eigenvector and get t equal that, because then we have one negative, one zero with negative 2. Because we would use, we use lambda 1 equals right. plus 2. So if we would use lambda 2, would that have switched it? If we would have used that's a, uh, that's that's the point. If we would have used the the lambda two, we would have gotten the opposite t uh, uh, imaginary part, right? But then it means that our beta was negative. So our beta was negative meant in the canonical form. This was counterclockwise. And the transformation was reversing the orientation, so we would, we would have end up. We have to end up with the same 
orientation. Okay. So again, let me let me say it again that the orientation is not necessarily given by beta, but is given by the combination of beta that you pick. Because you could have very well have picked beta to be the opposite, right? And the orient the uh, uh, the sign of this, so is the determinant of this. So let me let me make that determinant of this positive means t is. Uh, pres preserving orientation. Okay. Okay. In the end, you have a system. It has a face portrait. So, you know, it's. Um, One or the other. Now, l give me give me a system that actually has the opposite, like uh, counterclockwise. Well, it's enough to take this and flip this. Say, change the orientation. Like flip the x direction, right? The first direction. Yeah. How would that? How would you change that in here? Well, to change x into negative x, right? You have to change the value of b to opposite b. And you have to change the value of, 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 of c. Okay? Do you see the opposite orientation? Of course, this is still spiraling in. Okay? So this is just the previous one, but it's with the x uh, replaced with negative x. Okay? So yeah, you can get, and and if you do this, you know, take that system, zero, negative one, five, and negative two, go through the whole thing, and you you should be getting this. I mean, right? And again, from the canonical system, and the transformation, the the orientation, preserving or orientation changing. Okay. So there there is there is you know there is. Um, There's this combination that gives you the the, uh, the face portrait. Um, let's see. So today's Wednesday, right? And um, I haven't talked about. I only talked about a little bit of uh, in chapter four. And the pl what I'm planning to do actually is not talk about dynamic classification as of right now, um, but postpone that till um, later and start talking about this higher dimensional uh, systems okay and um, I just want to point out the following um, code and we'll talk about this later but you see what happens if you have a 3 by 3 system okay P plane will do us no absolutely no good right So there is, actually there is, and I didn't make a link yet, but um, there is so-called OD solve here, which is a very, oh, um, which is a, again I have to double check that it works well on this um, version of MATLAB. Oh, I had it there already, okay. So let me just open it and ask you to kind of look at it for over the weekend. Um, what do you see here? Well, you see two equations, but you can change that. You can change it to like three equations. And when you get, you get a, a space for putting a third equation in, okay? Now this is, it's nice because you can put pretty much any, any three by three equation. And let's see if in the gallery there is a linear there's no linear one but um, let's try this two springs yeah this this springs is linear do you see this as being linear or not really 
Uh, x prime is u, u prime is has x and y, y prime has v, and v prime has x and y, and they're all linear, okay? So this is the linear systems. For, for, of course, it's four-dimensional, four but... Um, and you won't have the luxury of seeing the face portrait, because there is no face portrait. It would have to be four-dimensional face portrait, and we cannot plot that, right? Even in three dimensions, it's, it's a mess to plot a three-dimensional face portrait, right? So what you have here is the option, oh, okay. You have the option of face portrait, but only for two of the four variables. So you, you get a pick, like I think if you pick X and Y, this is a two pendulum. <laughs> what do you see? <laughs> you, you see a self-intersecting trajectory, right? Which would not be possible in a two-dimensional system, right? In fact, this is just the plotting of, of the two variables um, that were, you saw there. So the time plot is the most uh, efficient one. Let's plot all of them and see what happens. All right, I'll be done in a second. Okay, so here it is, okay? So this is, oops, this is the uh, plot of all four versus time starting with that initial condition, okay? So you won't have the luxury of plotting uh, a four-dimensional face portrait. You can do selectively on, 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 on uh, um, pairs of, of the variables, but this is the time plot, okay? And uh, so we're going to have to be able to deal with that kind of situation. Okay? So that requires some higher dimensional in algebra, like you have a 4x4 four four system, what's the canonical form of a 4x4 four four matrix? Well, you can have lots of cases, right? You can have repeated roots, distinct roots, and all of that. So that's, that's kind of the next, next, next task, is to extend this Right, we started with one-dimensional system, uh, one-dimensional equations. Then we talked about two-dimensional. Question is, what? How does it extend to the general? And we lose tools, right, along the way. So we have to develop new tools. All right. And I'll try to post some homework by Friday. So by the time you're done with this one, you should have the next one. Thank you.